Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I finally have my indigo vat up and running after some troubleshooting. You can find the whole story about how I set up the vat. I had my failed iron vat and now it's this hydrosulfite vat. Uh, you can find those videos on the channel already. Now that the vat is up and running, I want to try to create a gradient. Um, and so with, with these indigo vats, you dip your fiber into the vat, you bring it out, you let it oxidize, and then you can dip multiple more times to get increasingly darker and darker colors. And I wanted to see if I can achieve this with my resurrected vat and some 100% organic cotton yarn. I have pre-soaked four mini skeins and now we are going to start dipping these in the vat and hope that we get some really cool gradient of color. And now I'm going to send you back in time to talk a little bit more about the yarn and how I prepared it before I had even set up the vat. I thought it would be fun to create a gradient by doing different amounts of dips on these four 50 gram skeins of Simply Cotton Sport yarn. I have already wound them around my four foot nitty knotty uh, to convert them from the ball form they came in into skeins. These are the colorway Marshmallow, which is a natural 100% organic cotton colorway. Um, the, these have not been bleached and so they are a great candidate for dyeing with this completely natural dye. This is the night before I set up the first vat and I am preparing a lot of fiber in advance. Typically I'm bad about adding extra ties, but I did go ahead and add additional acrylic dyes to all of our, all of the hanks. And now I'm going to go pre-soak this in plain tap water overnight. And part of the reason for the long pre-soak is that we want to remove as much air from the yarn as we can in advance. My plan is of these four skeins to dip one of them once, one of them four times, and then the other two will be in between. I am going to start off with the, start off with one skein, and then the next time we'll dip two, and then three, and then four. And the reason why I'm doing this is that I'm not expecting the dye bath to start exhausting yet, but I would like there to be the greatest difference possible between the palest color and the darkest color. And I think if I was going to start with all of them at once, then um, potentially that first dip would be darker than it might be otherwise. Um, everything that I'm using is dedicated dyeing equipment. And so here is our vat. And actually we're starting to get a little bit of a flower here. Let's see if this is getting thicker. Eh, it's not that thick, not too much to push aside. I think you can remove the flower and put it back. I, I don't really know. My technique is not perfect, but this is all a learning process. So here is 50 grams of our pre-soaked fiber. And so the vat probably shouldn't be this cloudy, but you can see the yarn in here looks like a brilliant yellow green. And I've got it submerged beneath the surface and I'm just slowly sort of rotating it in the vat um, to get I don't want to lose hold of it, but to give the dye time to penetrate the and bind to the fibers. And so you can get a little sense, maybe you can see that yellow green beneath the surface. But in theory, and I really sh maybe should be timing this, but uh, you know, we're, we're going to see what we get if we get something that looks like a gradient or not. Um, and we might not even really be able to tell until it dries, but hopefully we'll get something that works. Okay, I'm going to pull this out. I should be wringing this beneath the surface, so that's one bad. But you can already see, actually, since I wring it out, it's starting to shift from yellow to blue. I'm going to pop it into my rinse bucket. I'm actually squeezing it helped. I think the amount of dye that there is to rinse out, and I should cover up my vat. There is more sediment in here than there really should be, but you can see we've already gone from our yellow green 
and we are oxidizing nicely to this blue. Uh, I'm gonna pop this into, we have our, our waiting chamber. Uh, when it dries, we'll be able to do more, but actually this oxidized a bit faster than my other cotton that I did. But see, even that, just with one dip, we've got a nice, really, really bright blue. And before with the cotton, it took a bit longer. So I'm actually pretty surprised, but let's go ahead and uh, we completely, okay, aha, under the tie, I still see a teeny bit of yellow. Okay, so we're, we're gonna want to let this sit for uh, a minute or so before we start dipping it with a friend. But we're just about ready to go. Let's give this a shot. Now I'm curious, if I hold these next to each other in a hand, oh, I don't really see color transfer, so that's pretty good. But so you can see the difference in color from what we started with and what we have now. All right, as I go, and again, I'm gonna try to keep a good hand on my skeins so it doesn't get tangled. And I think you hear the street clear coming by. And I'm sort of just, well, you don't have much of a flower on right now. But as I am going be below eventually, and I think it should take a little longer for the one that had completely oxidized already, you can see the fresh one in the bath looking rather yellow. The other one should, I think, start looking more yellow too. Um, who knows if I did a much shorter dip if we would get a significantly paler color. But this is gonna be the first time that I will have compared a one dip to a two dip. So I am kind of excited about that actually. But I, you know, I think that it didn't seem like there was a ton of rinsing. The water started, stopped for the first ones I tried being super cloudy pretty quickly. But there is more sediment and par particles in here than, than there might be in, um, than maybe there should be. But we're still getting stunning colors and that's what I care about. Okay, you see here we've got a green and a yellow. Squeezing it out. Popping it into the rinse bucket, and I think this is where I probably ran into trouble last time. So I'm wearing these kitchen gloves, mainly, okay good, I got a good handle on this, um, mainly to uh, prevent myself from dyeing my hands blue, and it could probably be an irritant as well. Okay, so we're rinsing that off. Before the next ones, I think I'll change out this rinse water. Oh, I didn't do anything to differentiate between the skeins, but hopefully, hopefully that won't matter and it'll be rather obvious which one is which. I hope. <laughs> that is, that is the hope. But right now at least, Looks like I'm seeing a difference. I see one that looks darker than the other, and that is what we want to see. Okay, well, as these oxidize, and actually I might bring them out, or squeeze them out gently a tiny bit more, in order for the oxidation to happen, your, your yarn needs to have contact with the air. So while it's underwater or something, you won't get um, while it's submerged, you won't get the, the oxidation. And right now, it looks like we've got from the one dip a nice medium blue, from the two a navy. But this is cotton. And cotton will lighten significantly as it dries. So that is sort of the heads up, but I think these colors are really cool. Here's a close up after two dips. and the. Shade difference is subtle, but there's no question that there's a darker one and a lighter one. We are ready for dip number three. Okay, we've got one and two with our two shades, our two shades of blue. 
got Hank number three. So here's the, the vast difference between that. And then our lovely, lovely, lovely vat. And into it we go. So this yarn, I found that this simply cotton or 100% organic cotton from Knit Picks can be a little finicky when it comes to uh, getting wet. Um, actually, I'm gonna move where my hand is. Um, it can be a little, little hard to, uh, to soak and get the water. This actually pre-soaked for a few nights, uh, mainly because I had the trouble with the vat at the beginning, but, you know, we, yeah, so it, it ended up pre-soaking a lot longer than I had expected. And this is different from actually the cotton that I used in the first round. But let's see, I'm seeing green and yellow. So that's good. Uh, just in here a little longer. The, the chemistry of all this is actually really fascinating. And there's a book that I highly recommend if you wanna learn a little bit about the history of indigo and a bunch of different types of vats. And I'll put a link to that in the video description. And also, I need to give a shout out to Stony Creek Colors, who sent me their American grown extracted, plant extracted indigo that I am using today. And they also generously helped me troubleshoot my vat when I was having trouble. But I know I need to pop into the rinse bath, but check out these greens. Well, they're now turning blue. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna pop that in, cover up my vat. If I can get through today without turning completely blue myself, I will call that a win. I'm now trying to not end up with a tangled mess, but I don't know where my, I've lost the good hand that I like, but I am now swirling this in the rinse water Um, and I'm going to remove the water. Okay. Let's see if I can find my skeins. And one of these is starting to look, uh oh, truly dark. There we go. Wow. So, what I can't really tell yet, because we're still oxidizing, clearly there is one that is super, super dark. Um, and there's one that is paler. It's the intermediate color that I am a little unsure if we're going to have like a full gradient or if they're all taking a little too much color. But I think I see a gradient. But again, things are a lot darker than I expected. And there's a limit to how much color you can absorb for any dip. So maybe I should be dipping shorter. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should be doing more, more steps. Uh, but I do think I see three distinct shades here. The, the difference between one and three, one dip and three dip is the most extreme, but uh, yeah, making sure we get fully oxidized before we go back in. Here, let me bring up these three colors. Oh yeah, I think that these differences will be even more obvious once, um, when you move it in the light, you can see a difference between the, the three dips and the two. Um, it's not in a very extreme gradient, but uh, maybe it'll feel more extreme once it dries, I'm not sure. But let's get ready for the final, our final dip, dip number four. I 
and seeing a difference. And if you compare it to the undyed, then there is absolutely, absolutely a difference. Okay, let's try to keep a handle on it when I go into the rinse this time. Take the lid off. Are we ready? We're going in. This is dip number four. So there's still a lot of dye in here. Um, maybe, yeah, I've got a couple other experiments planned, but since I didn't know if my rejuvenation was going to work, I didn't have quite as much stuff prepped as I had originally planned. So I think that I will be going and planning a few other, other things to do. Now we're now this hydrosulfite bath, but there's definitely still some probably some iron in here. Um, but technically uh, the iron bath can last a long time. It can last weeks. And I'm not expecting that this one will last quite as long, but hopefully I can get a few days out of it. Um, but, all right. Um, there might be some kettle dye effect. I'm like trying to like wiggle my hand so that way the dye can get to where my hand is. I'm not, maybe I can shift down a little bit. But anyway, okay, I'm gonna pull up, keep a hand on, but look at that pale green versus the, the darker greens from the ones that have already been dipped. Squeeze out when I can, but we're immediately starting to oxidize. We're supposed to squeeze under the surface, um, but uh, I think that I could always add some more. I set this up using the, actually the RIT color remover, and I have more of that. So I think that if what's in the bucket starts to oxidize too much, I can sort of try to resurrect it by adding more of that again. But. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. And this wrist water I am just pouring on my lawn, not within the fenced area where my dogs and kids can access it, but just, you know, on, on the grass. The indigo itself will uh, break down and I'm not worried but this could also go down the drain obviously if you have a septic tank I wouldn't but all right let's see okay I'm just gonna le lay that out for a second and I'm gonna pop off my gloves so that way I can try to zoom you in on the fiber it is a bright bright warm sunny day there we go there is still some green in there you see on i think this is the one that's only been dipped once oh dear we are a little tangled okay so it's looking like we've got one and then let's see if i can tell the difference between the other ones to make our little gradient uh-oh, there we go. That, maybe that's two. And I do see a bit of a difference. It's real subtle. It's really, really subtle. And yeah, I think you get the biggest difference from one dip but it does definitely get darker. And I think that, um, you know, the, the, the one, they all might still be oxidizing a bit. But what I've read is that if you want, um, if you want to get some really, really dark colors, like if you want your cotton to look navy, um, as navy as this looks right now, you need to keep going. Um, I think that that might lighten to a paler blue as it dries. Um, actually, in comparison, here is some wool and cotton that I dipped twice and have rinsed a bit. Um, and still needs to be washed thoroughly. But, you know, over here I have one to four dips. 
and this is cool. This is really, really cool. A couple of minutes have passed and I definitely see at least three shades. Do I see four? I'm not really sure. <laughs> but I'm gonna change out the rinse water and we'll do a couple rinses in the bucket. All right, so these four skeins have been quickly rinsed when they first came out of the dye vat. Um, now I'm gonna carefully pick them up. Oh yeah, I see at least three shades. And plop them into some fresh water. Um, my goal is to sort of get as much of the color out as I can while we're outside before I go inside and start doing who knows how many washes are required. So this is 200 grams of yarn that have been dipped, um, you know, between one one and four times, squeezing out that excess water. Um, so you can see that that got really dark. Um, but last time, I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, two other complete rinses and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. After, oh, I don't even know if you can see. Okay, after two complete rinses off camera, um, the water is starting to get clear, which is nice. <laughs> It's nice for it to not take too, too, too long. Um, I'm not sure if the lightest color is starting to look a little lighter to me or not, but the colors of the yarn are still super, super vibrant. So I'll probably do some more rinses outside before I decide to bring this inside. But I just wanted to show you, uh, which again, I can't tell if because of the sunlight, if you can even see um, that, you know, I can, if I put my hand in the bucket, I can see it now, um, which I couldn't at the beginning. So I'm gonna keep rinsing. I've rinsed this yarn out a lot with the bucket and the hose outside. And now that we're indoors, I am gonna go ahead and add a splash of vinegar to this wash water. The dyeing conditions that we used were basic. Um, and, you know, I'm not, yeah, I might not want to stick my hand directly in the vat, but with enough dilution, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable touching this with my hands now, but this can help, I guess a little bit of acid can help bring the fibers back. I don't know, they recommend citric acid, but I decided to use some vinegar. And you can see that there's still some bleeding. Before I continue rinsing this, I am um, going to rearrange the fibers. I did find, even though there's not a lot of color coming out right now, that a lot, a lot, a lot of rinsing is required um, to get the water clear. And, and possibly this is in big part because my vat was not a, um, my vat was not a very like, clear and clean one. There's a lot of sediment and other gunk in there. But I'm gonna go ahead and add a healthy, healthy dash of dish soap. The good news is that with all the washing that I've been doing, my hands have not taken on any color at all. So, I mean, all things considered, this amount of bleeding is a low level of bleeding. But I want to, tr I'm hoping that none of the indigo will rub off once it's dry. So I will come back and show you the finished dried yarns. We'll take a look at our gradient and we'll do some rub tests to see if it's rub fast. Here is the finished dry yarn that we dyed in my hydrosulfite indigo vat. Uh, we did either one, two, three, or four separate dips into the vat to give us these four shades of blue. The Darker two shades are pretty close together, but if I swap their position, um, and maybe it's a little hard to tell on camera, you can tell that the gradient isn't quite 
in the right order. And the same is true with the, the middle two shades, that it looks out of order once you sort of move them around. I think that if you wanted a lighter color, that you should do a much faster dip. I think my dips were each around a minute long or so. And I think if you, know, if you did a really, really fast dip, maybe the color wouldn't have been even throughout the skein, but you still could have achieved a lighter color. The, the yarns are definitely kettle dyed. There are some lighter patches and darker patches within each of the skeins, but I think that this is something that's the most apparent on the one skein that only had one dip because we weren't necessarily holding the other three in the same place each time when we went back into the vat. The colors lightened a bit as the yarn dried, but we definitely have a navy over there. Um, I mean, these look like a medium wash to a dark wash blue, dream, blue jean. I think that you could still get a shade of navy that's closer to black. So maybe if we went through and did a few more iterations of the color, we could have gotten something even deeper. But I am really happy with the saturation of these yarns. There was a lot of washing involved, and the skeins themselves are um, a little a little messy. You can see that they don't look like straight and ordered. The they could you definitely use some reskeining. Speaking of ties, these extra ties that I added to the yarn were 100% acrylic, and they definitely absorbed some amount of color. Way less than even the one dip 100% organic cotton absorbed, but I do see a difference just by eye between the one dip and four dip acrylic. Um, so if nothing else, this says that this technique will stain and so be care of what you're wearing and what you're using when you are playing with your indigo vat. I said we would do a rub test and let's do a rub test. Here is just a white cotton t-shirt, our four dip yarn. And I'm just rubbing this on. I think the shirt, I don't know if the shirt's a little damp, but okay, I was just rubbing that and I don't see any color transfer from the yarn onto the shirt. So our color is rub fast and I believe that it is wash fast as well, which means that we really do have a working vat. That isn't to say that you won't get some bleeding from your yarn. Um, if you think about a brand new pair of blue jeans, how it could bleed or maybe a little bit would rub off. Um, maybe if the shirt was damp, maybe we would see something rub off there. But I am, uh, I am pleased that the shirt came out still white um, because if the, the yarn was not dyed properly, then color would rub off and the indigo would not be rub fast. Once again, I would like to give a huge, huge thank you to Stony Creek Colors for sending me some of their American-grown plant-derived indigo so I could do these series of videos for you and play around with one of the oldest natural blues that you can create on fiber. Stony Creek sells some kits so that way you can set up your own vat with the indigo that they grew and extracted themselves. And you can get protocols that will work and you won't have to go through the whole fail and resurrection that I did today. They sell a kit complete with the RIT color remover so you can set up a hydrosulfite vat exactly like the one that I have been using successfully, just without some of the extra sediment from the fail and resurrection part. If you would like to see more about my whole indigo dyeing journey, make sure you check out the Indigo Week playlist on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. You can see the whole story from my fail, how I fixed the vet, and then how I created this gradient today. There are even a couple more projects coming up for the end of the week, so make sure you stay tuned to see more ways that I combine some of my favorite dyeing techniques with this indigo vat. And don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I love to explore new ways to apply color to yarn, 
and whether or not it's a flop or a success. I like to share the results with you so that way we can all learn together. And if you enjoy this philosophy, subscribe, like, all of this helps me continue to produce more fantastic content. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.